Almost every photographer that I know has a dream job, something that they would do anything to photograph. It could be a yearly event like the Academy Awards or the World Series or the Super Bowl. It could be even more rare than that, like the Olympics or an inauguration. But periodically, you find an event that is so rare, it's once in a lifetime. Today, we'll take a look at the biggest combat sports fight in history on this episode of Behind the Shot. <laughs> Hi, once again, welcome to Behind the Shot, where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. I'm your host, Steve Brazel, and as always, this episode and every episode has an associated blog post. All you have to do is go to uh, thisweekinphoto.com, click the link for Behind the Shot, and you'll find all the episodes there. You can contact me through the contact page there as well, or you can follow me on social media, Raz2 on Twitter, Steve Brazel on uh, Instagram, Steve Brazel Photography on Facebook, just whatever you want. Reach out to me, man. Always good to talk to people. So today, I've got somebody that I've wanted to get on for a while because I've known this guy for a couple of years. I, I've photographed a couple of events with him. And in my opinion, he is one of the premier combat sports photographers, fight sports photographers. Um, he shoots not only ringside for these fights, but he does behind the scenes stuff. He does some amazing training f photographs. I mean, actually, in my opinion, by the way, Scott, your some of your training photographs are amazing. I welcome Scott Hirano to the uh, to the podcast. How you doing, buddy? Good. Thank you for having me, Steve. Appreciate it's it. my pleasure having you. I, like I say, I've wanted to get you on for a while. You and I met originally because uh, I do karate and some of my friends that I train with do Muay Thai or kickboxing K1 glory. And so I've gone and photographed their, their events and, and you were ringside and we got to talking and met each other. Um, and in doing fight sports photography for me, it was a huge challenge. Concert photography is low light action photography, but at least the band is, is usually all facing me, right? In, in a ring, I'm usually shooting somebody's back, at least one fighter's back. But you've become kind of a go-to for, for a lot of outlets for combat sports photography. Um, when, when you talk to people and they find out you're a photographer, how do you describe what you photograph? Uh, just fights. And then, I don't know, they, I, I guess people react in a way where they're not sure what that, what that means. So just it come, uh, fights like in a cage or in a ring or, you know, kind of very, ba very basic or general, uh, generalized terms. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just shoot, I shoot fights. So MMA. Yeah. MMA, a uh, little boxing, very little on, on occasion now. Uh, right now, mostly MMA. Uh, previously it was a lot of Muay Thai and kickboxing, but right Some now. Some jujitsu in there as well. Jujitsu. Yeah. Okay. So you, when you shoot these things, you have shot for, like I shoot when I do concerts, you've shot for media outlets before. So you're shooting for press coverage for whatever the event is. But you also shoot for, for some of the promotions. Give me an idea of some of the big promotions that you've shot for. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was on with Glory Kickboxing for a little while for about 10 events. Um, for those, it's very, it's very small community. But if you're into jiu-jitsu, I did Metamoris for their whole stretch from beginning to end. Um, uh, I have uh, Invicta, which is a all women's MMA. A lot of their stars end up in the UFC. Um, uh, Combate America. In fact, the, one of the ex Invicta champions is on, as we're recording this, the time that we're recording this, is on the new Ultimate Fighter uh, show, one of their previous champions as well. Right. Yeah. I think several, several of their, their fighters are, are a part of that, that, that particular season. Do you have a, do you have a favorite? I mean, okay. You shoot mostly MMA now, yeah. but, but if you were, you know, king of the world and could say, I'm only going to shoot this type of fight sport, what would it be? Uh, it'd probably be kickboxing. I, I think it's, I, th I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's constant action and there's no, uh, jujitsu is very technical and, uh, uh, photographically doesn't really, it doesn't always uh, translate to exciting moments uh, because some of the, some meaningful moments are just are small transitions of hands right, moving right. here, 
you know, things like that. And, and to a, a general viewer, a general fan looking at photos, it's not very interesting. So where everybody understands contact in terms of uh, somebody getting kicked to the head or. Right. Or, their face or, or smushed and sweat flying. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when you shoot, uh, when I've photographed with you, we've been ringside, but on occasion, depending on the, the event, you're up on the edges of the ring or you're doing behind the scenes stuff. Um, we didn't mention along with glory. We didn't mention showtime. Uh, mm. you, you've obviously photographed for showtime and the, the photo that we're going to be talking about today was a showtime event. Uh, but you've also photographed around the world from Thailand to pretty much everywhere. Um, when you're doing what you do with combat sports, is there a, is there an area of the world that you think, if you're going to photograph combat sports, that's where you want to do it other than the U S probably Thailand. Right. I think because of the, yeah, I'm sure there are other countries that are, that, that give me, that would give me the same feeling. Um, but I think the texture of the place where I tend to end up shooting in Thailand is very gritty and very real in terms of, um, why people are fighting. It's very, very much linked to, uh, their survival. Um, it, where I go to shoot, that is, uh, there's, I, I, I don't often shoot in the stadiums. Uh, I, I have, but, but not really lately. And, um, uh, in the stadiums, you get people who are making a better living, but, uh, where I have gone to shoot the last few years, uh, it's a very poor region and it's, and it's very interesting to photograph fighting when it's, when, when you're, when a fighter's survival is really at hand or, well, or they're fit linked to their, their family survival as well, for that matter. So. Which is an interesting segue into what we're going to talk about today. So going from the poor regions where people are fighting literally for their income, for their life and for their family to the moneymaker, mm -hmm. right? Which some people have referred to what we're going to talk about today as the fight of the century, the moneymaker, um, the greatest combat sports fight in history. And that is Mayweather McGregor at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. How did this fight for you come about? Because you you shot, I think, uh, Mayweather Pacquiao, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've done uh, alongside Esther Lynn. I'd be amiss not to mention her. She's uh, uh, the, I guess, the main photographer at Showtime for their large boxing events, and uh, she's she's brought me along for uh, a variety of different Showtime sort of. Uh, jobs, I guess you would say, um, whether it be a press conference, a, an open workout or whatever. So that's gone on for a little while. So I've shot the last three Mayweather fights, Mayweather Maidana, Mayweather Pacquiao, and now this one. So which all of I mean, it's Mayweather, right? I mean, all yeah. of these are huge in the boxing world, at least mm -hmm. huge fights, huge pay-per-view draws and huge money on the line. Then we end up with Conor McGregor and Mayweather fighting in Las Vegas. Um, when you got the call to do this fight, did you say, you know, did you jump for joy? Or did you, in your head, start feeling pressure? I, I'm really curious because most of us, this is a once in a lifetime fight, right? Most of us are not going to get to photograph a fight like this. What goes through your head when you get the phone call from Esther or Showtime or whoever saying, uh, yeah, we want you to photograph this huge event? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a it's it's probably it's a mixture of pressure and ex excitement, but it's probably a little more pressure. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, it's so yeah, I'm I, I'm thrilled to to be called for something like this, and I think I'm I'm best equipped to handle the the shooting situations for this event than I had been previously. So, uh, updated my cameras and things like that, and just felt more, more capable. Um, you know, I was just about to bring the shot up, but actually now I'm curious because you just said you upgraded your cameras. Well, I mean, I, I, I bought a second, I, I bought a second one DX. So, so you're I, a Canon shooter then. Yeah. And is that your body of choice? The one DX? Y yeah. Just the, the, the ISO performance and the, the frame rate for, for the fights themselves. And, um, one DX Mark one, Mark two. Uh, I have the Mark one, two Mark. Ones. Okay. And so we'll get into lenses and stuff here in, in just a second, but it's interesting that, 
you know, it's for what you're photographing, obviously, the frame rate is is key on having that high end body. The photograph that we're going to talk about that I'm bringing up right now is Conor McGregor post fight. And I love this shot because this shot is everything you want in a behind the scenes um, journey. You know, it's journalistic, right? So Conor McGregor is and I'm going to pull up a shot later, which I've I don't think I've ever done before. I usually only show one shot. But I think it's key to see the the facial expression changes from before the fight with Conor McGregor and that um, I, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, that kind of bodacious attitude, right? That confident, that extreme confidence right. that he exudes. Right. And then you get this post fight. When you look at this shot, what do you see in his face? I, you know, it's I, it's funny. I, I guess I never really uh there was there was so much going on that uh, in that moment and uh i mean overall the tone was um uh sort of was was a little he was he was down uh but uh but i i think i think my view of this photo is very much informed by what happened around it so he he was down in the way where where uh, he man, what if I could have went twelve rounds instead of the ten? What if I just changed up a few things? And it it, it was it, it wasn't the same sort of feeling down as happens as maybe as if he were training his whole life to fight a title fight and then lost that. So this was definitely not that um, he didn't train. Are, his whole are you life. saying it was more introspective of self self analysis? It definitely was a lighter thing. Behind me, this are are uh, uh, his father, the Fertitta brothers, Dana White's just to my left, and uh, and they're the, the Connor's dad is about to pour everybody a drink, and they're about to toast. So it's a well, very like so this this he's probably feeling a million things. He, he just got paid a, a zillion dollars, and um, his stock just went through the roof, and he's probably he's probably already hearing word of of uh man you just went 10 rounds on your pro debut with one of the best walk boxers to ever live and and all these things and and uh yeah i'm sure it's going up and down he's a competitor he's 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 obviously very competitive and uh took this very serious as he as he w went 10 rounds and um it's it, you know what's interesting about this shot to me and and those of you that are listening audio only and i know some people do listen audio only you can see this photo at the blog post at thisweekinphoto.com but What's fascinating, there, there's a couple of things in this shot to me that make it that journalistic genius shot, right? First of all, this is a facial expression you rarely see on Conor McGregor, right? He, his, his hand to the back of his head, and he's just kind of looking down in thought with a you know, shiner under his eye. But then in front of him is the baby. And there's such a juxtaposition of this fighter that is so good in his own right i mean one of the greatest mma fighters of all time um definite future hall of famer in in ufc and went 10 rounds with one of the greatest boxers of all time and he's sitting here looking down with a baby in front of him which is and i'm assuming that's his child yeah his wife and child yeah um the juxtaposition there is just amazing i'm curious when you're okay so you're in a room this is behind the scenes at, at t-mobile you're in a room there's i've seen a wider shot you had where he was actually in this same environment smiling um and there's tons of people tons of cameras obviously tons of energy and and stuff happening how did you manage to get yourself to this angle was that difficult were you aware that the baby was in front and that was an intentional compositional choice uh in 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 the whole from beginning to end of this fight night um a lot of times w w when i was in may or mcgregor's room uh i i didn't have a lot of choices on where to shoot so uh, i don't know maybe i had two choices of a group of people the group of people consisted of showtime video people um, Conor McGregor's video guy, Conor McGregor's photo guy, uh, management, bodyguards. And so you uh, uh, are, are, are squeezing your way into um, one of maybe a couple positions. 
I'm in there and I feel the urgency. Maybe I'm going to get kicked out. So, uh, I, I, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I, I, I really wanted a clearer shot of the family, but I, I just couldn't position myself to get there. But, um, I felt like this was nice. This had like a nice depth of field and the suggestion of the baby and you know, the su suggestion of his wife and, and baby, uh, being blurred in the So foreground. you were aware of them then? Yeah, 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 definitely. They're, they were definitely part of it. And they were the, 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 I, if I had, I shown the, uh, the wife's face, there was, there was concern for, uh, I would imagine the, the mood of her husband sitting next to her and, um, she wasn't jumping up and down or anything about, you know, and, and but she, yeah, so the, it was, it was an interesting moment and, uh, definitely uh, poignant in, in this particular photo. See, and, and you just mentioned the wife's face, which is uh, not in the picture. You've got it cropped out, which is part of the compositional thing that I love about the photo, actually, because, you know, it's his wife and baby. I mean, I wasn't sure, but I was confident that that's his wife and child. Mm. And there's that that photojournalism coming through again, where there is a story behind this. This whole shot, when I looked at it, is you, it's clearly post fight. You can see in his eyes which side of the fight he came out on. You've got the family environment, and it really is fantastic photojournalism composition in this shot. Okay. When you walk in that room, do you, first of all, you're not using on camera flash, right? It's whatever room light is in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine being allowed to use a flash. How do you balance the, is it fluorescent? And you, I mean, in other words, do, do you white balance this in post? Was it weird? No, I, I try to, I try to white balance, uh, according to where I'm at. I don't know. I would, I'd imagine this was tungsten. I, I, I couldn't tell you, but, uh, I, I can't remember offhand, but, uh, yeah, I think I try to as, as much as possible white balance for whatever room I'm in, because I've, I've got to deliver these cards to these memory cards to an editor who's, um, feeding showtime social media or social social um showtime's uh like media department in general and they're they're feeding social media they're feeding other outlets and these photos go god knows where so you're not on auto white balance you're you're adjusting your white balance as you go room to room yes. or arena yeah okay that's interesting so okay so here's a, a technical kind of thing before the fight starts do you go measure and set auto white balances for different rooms and remember what they are? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we kind of, right when we arrive at the venue, uh, the, the almost with any fight event, uh, that I have access to the back, um, I'm looking for the locker rooms. I'm looking for where I'll be able to shoot, uh, and those kinds of things. And yeah, I'm looking at the light and fortunately in the T-Mobile arena, the lighting backstage is amazing. Uh, especially for like non-action moments like these and you've got all the light in the world um yeah so yeah you're 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 taking note of white balance so that once you pop into that room you're, you're already going to that and your editor doesn't have to deal with it and it just eases the flow that on top of you know as you uh, as you're aware in shooting concerts you know that and 10 other things that you're just trying to line up so the editor doesn't really have to touch the photo much yeah, I know exactly what you mean, actually. So when you're when you're shooting this, first of all, just I'm curious, I'm assuming you don't get any time to personally introduce yourself or say hi to the fighters. Right? No, as, as kind of a personal rule, uh, I, I don't ever cross the line, whether it's an amateur event or or this event or poor, poor people in a different country. I, I, I really don't bother or. Um, yeah, I just work, work is, work. yeah, I just, I'm gonna fly on the wall and, and, and I enjoy it that way. So I'm curious when you're photographing fight sports, yeah. right? Everybody in their genre, mm -hmm. right? A wedding photographer in his head goes, no, 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 this makes a perfect wedding mm -hmm. photo. And for me, this makes a perfect concert photo. When you're looking at other fight photographers or taking your own shots and you're looking through them on your computer, what makes the perfect fight sport, combat sport image? I, I don't know. I don't know if I even, uh, I, I, I don't even know that I um, am aware of it. Uh, I, I know what I like. I know what kind of passes. I know like uh, even, even down to like when somebody's wrapping their hands, I know like where, where I might want the hands and where I don't want the hands and, and things like that. But 
Um, and I know those things just work. I don't, I don't know if they're the perfect moment or what, but very often I see others shooting the, the very same thing and I'm blown away by what others are doing. And, uh, I, th- I, I don't know, maybe part of that is I, I see my own work and I'm sort of, I, I'm kind of, um, I don't want to say bored by it, but I, I think I need to improve. So I, I keep seeing, I, I produce, I feel like I produce the same thing over and over again. And, and I sh- I'm shooting the same content over and over again. So that's bound to happen. But um, yeah, I'm always struggling to try to push myself to a, a different place and find some newer way to shoot. So. Yeah, I'm, so, not, I'm not sure what the perfect moment is. Yeah, or perfect way well, of shooting. So you're in you're you're in shooting, uh, you know, either ringside, behind the scenes, whatever. Obviously, in the back of your head, consciously or subconsciously, you've got you know those composition rules, rules of third, things like that. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When you walk into a place like T-Mobile to shoot a, a you know event like this. And you're in the warm up room, you're in Connor's room, you're in, you know, Floyd's room, whatever it is. Do you have default settings on your camera that you start with? And uh, when you change them, what are your, you know, what are your triggers for saying, oh, I need to either raise the shutter or raise the ISO or what's your starting point, first of all? Uh, I, I, I think the, the biggest thing is I'm trying to be at a, a as low a, ISO as I can, um, just to just to heighten the quality of the image. But uh, you tend to have to compromise that in a lot of situations because it is, you know, the corners drop off and it gets dark. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think I have a default setting or or there's no. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I try to I try to I try to shoot so that the image is as high quality as it can be. So uh, any idea what this was photographed at? Uh, I think that's, if I had to guess, uh, I had three, I was running around with three lenses. I had a 1635, a hundred 2.8 macro, um, which is one of my favorite portrait lenses actually. Yeah. I just bought it like, uh, I don't know how many months ago and man, I love that thing. The I bokeh love, on love. that thing is insane. And I love that you can be like right here next to somebody and still be shooting them, uh, without worrying about versus a 7200 you need some distance right 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 so you had 16 to 35 100 macro and what else uh i i can't remember what else maybe I, maybe the 50 uh, uh but i but maybe the 2470 yeah what do you think this was i think that was 100 macro okay any idea oh so you're a little bit away though yeah yeah i'm the, i'm I, i'm pushed back a little bit yeah and shooting like through this hole of equipment and people uh any idea what your exposure was on this uh I, I, I should have looked that up before I talked to you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe four hundredth of a second, maybe somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'm assuming you you shoot wide open two point eight. No, I try never to shoot wide open. Uh, uh, so I, I, if I had to guess, uh, and I think it might be, uh, it's one or the other. Maybe three point two or three point five. Okay, so you're still you're still four or below usually. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think your ISO was probably on one of these shots? Uh, 2,500 probably. Okay. So on a one DX, that's super clean. Yeah. That's pretty clean. Yeah. Um, Maybe when even you, 2, you, gi- yeah. you give you, what's the highest you go on a one DX? 3,200. Not above that? No. Cause I know people who shoot one DXs in concerts at, you know, 12,800. Yeah. I, I've, I've heard of uh, boxing photographers that shoot pretty high as well so that they can get, excuse me, like shoot, they're shooting like at F five whatever you know right which which is uh something i haven't been bold enough to do that's pretty that's pretty (laughs) clean that's pretty cool yeah it would be nice if it if it would come out clean yeah Uh, you give your card away and showtime's team takes these images processes them and post them do you do any post work no i don't even get it uh no, not for Showtime. No, not not in this not in this situation. I do for in other contexts, but not not this one. When when you do in other contexts, what software do you use? Uh, Lightroom, Photoshop too, or just Lightroom? Yeah, Photoshop. Where where I if you, you know if you got to do a little bit heavier editing or you want to, yeah yeah. There was a, a another thing I shot in the lead up to this, which was uh, uh, P Diddy and. Um, 
Mark Wahlberg did a promo and they wrapped their hands and did the whole nine yards. And I had to, uh, and yeah, they did a little promo for charity and, uh, I had to Photoshop, uh, some of the images and just really clean them up and stuff that Lightroom, I don't think was, uh, well, yeah, I had to use liquefy tool, for example. Right, right, right. Things yeah. Like and that. I mean, for me, mostly I'm probably 98% in Lightroom and I'll go in if it's a portfolio shot or a client shot, I might do some stuff. I, I had promised that I would show the pre-fight shot. So this was Conor McGregor's look and attitude before the fight, which I, I just, lo- again, this is one of those shots, the the symmetry, the chairs, the the angle that you managed to get yourself into. And, and you're not a big guy in this room of all these people um, to come in and get Conor McGregor sitting with this almost the way he's using the chair is his armrests. Mm-hmm. It's almost royal. <laughs> right. I mean, he's got his head up, his chin back. Uh, that's the Conor McGregor everybody sees. Right. Was this shot more difficult? No, this was actually, uh, uh, so the way it sort of works in, in these situations is, is a, the guy gets mobbed for a few seconds or um, a few minutes maybe, and everybody sort of exhausts the moment and, and they move out of the way. Uh, for, fortunately, they, they, in this case, that, that's what happened. So there was a couple guys... In the back room at any given time, there's maybe max three photographers. And uh, one of them is, is his, one of them is me, and one of them uh, was another guy. I don't, I don't know where he's from. And, but um, uh, in this case, uh, yeah, he was just sitting there. So I had every angle to choose from, and, and uh, I just plopped right in front of him. Literally just sat, that's a 1635, and I just sat right in front of him and Shot such away. a beautiful shot such i mean thank you you know most people would have cut off a toe or you know the tip of his shoe again your composition in your shots and people need to go look you up by the way and we're going to give out your links here in a second people need to look you up because i love some of the when during training you'll go to dojos that when people are training you do some killer silhouette work uh just really a great vision if if somebody wanted to try doing they're not obviously going to get a mayweather mcgregor fight but if somebody wanted to try what you do, you know, combat sports, what tips would you have? Uh, I, I, you know, I think, I think you just gotta, well, first, I mean, you gotta get into, to a place that lets you do it on a regular basis. I think, I think the, I, I, I think the, the, the base of any, any strong endeavor is just practice, you know, and, um, so, but yeah, you need a place to practice, whether that be a gym or you have access to fights on a regular basis, maybe amateur fights or something like that. Which and is kind of what I did. And that yeah. was with uh, WCK Muay Thai. Um, like I say, some of my friends are Muay Thai fighters. Mm. So I went photographing for our dojo. Mm. So I was able to get into the fighter's room and take photographs of hands being taped or signed by state commissioners, um, get ringside and that, I mean, I, I got to say, kind of like concert photography, fight, mm. f- fight photography is addicting. I mean, it's there. there is this constant chase and challenge to get the shot where the guy's back is not right in your camera or you get yeah. both faces or uh, it's just it's a wonderful challenge. I think every sports photographer should try fight photography at some point. Yeah, definitely. It's it's. Yeah, I, it's definitely gratifying. I think that's that's what made the fight, the Mayweather McGregor fight week, so satisfying was that there was so many. Um, uh, they threw the rules out so many times as far as like the structure of a press conference or or uh, a face off or whatever. They they just um, media just bum rushed the stage or fans somehow broke through the barricades or whatever. So you're in this challenge to get these shots and then you get the shots and it seems more, more satisfying that there was resistance. And, um, I, I, I forgot to ask you shot behind the scenes. Did you shoot any of the actual fight? No, none. Oh. I shot him on the ropes after he won. And that's just because I happened to be on his corner, but yeah, I, I mean, I, 
I, uh, the crowd went nuts. I was shooting the crowd at that point. There's no need to be in the back rooms anymore. And, um, I was next to, uh, Michael Rappaport, who was very vocal about the fight and he would happen to be right there and he jumped up and the place went nuts. And I turned around and Mayweather jumped on the ropes and I got a shot of that. And then, um, nice, nice. And then, so if yeah, people was, want to find out more about Scott Hirano, where do they go? I go to, you just uh you can go to my website or or instagram or um, i'm on facebook uh but yeah just the name scott hirano h-i-r-a-n-o okay um, so scott hirano.com scott yeah. hirano on instagram and twitter uh facebook it's scott hirano photography so go yeah. check out scott uh there'll be a gallery of his work on this blog post as well that you should check out but go follow him on social media give him some love scott thank you so much for for coming on man thank you steve i appreciate the time It's my pleasure. Again, thank you to everybody for joining us for this episode of Behind the Shot. I'm your host, Steve Brazel. On each episode, we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. We'll see you next time. Hey there, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. Thanks for checking out the TWIP Network on YouTube. If you'd like to keep up to date with the shows we're putting out, be sure to click subscribe. And while you're at it, give us a thumbs up. You can also subscribe on thisweekinphoto.com where you'll find lots of other great photography shows. Thanks for watching the TWIP Network on YouTube.